Hey guys and dolls, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a bit of a wait, but it's been one crazy week, so I'm going to try and pack as much as I can into this update for you this week. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and comment on any of my videos before the 28th of February 2019 to stand a chance to win that amazing makeup hamper, which I have inadvertently been adding stuff to over the past few weeks, so it may be a little more than what I had initially promised you guys. But anyway, let's get straight into it. This week we'll be jumping straight into it by recapping 21 Savage's immigration woes because those immigration woes are the reason for Chris Brown and Offset's recent fight which I find very weird but anyway let's continue. 21 Savage was taken in by American Immigration Services over a week ago. Um, they were claiming that he's uh, from the east of London which um, I'm not exactly sure which exact area that is but he entered the US on a visa when he was around 15 years old and has been traveling working living there and entering the country and coming i mean leaving the country and entering the country again so it's very weird that this would only happen uh recently as the guy has been working and living with an expired visa as they claim but it, this has led to a lot of people speculating as to the reason for um his de detention and the reason for ice actually putting attention on 21 Savage but it turns out that he recently criticized them in a song and people think that that's one of the reasons why they decided to go after him but I don't think a whole immigration agency would go after one rapper just because he said some shit about the way they handle themselves but regardless he is still unfortunately in custody and being kept away from his family his manager earlier this week gave an update about his state of mind and the way he's being treated and they said that he's in isolation about 23 hours a day he's not given any access to tv or radio so he doesn't know what's going on in the outside world and not much can be said for his human contact the only contact he's known to have thus far is with his manager who's only allowed to speak to him for 10 minutes a day on the phone and that's about it um there have not yet been any updates as to his position or whether he'll be released anytime soon but a lot of people are concerned about him and speaking of a lot of people being concerned about him um it has led to a little bit of beef between musicians over the past few weeks uh the first being between Wale and Demi Lovato after Demi like many of us laughed at the fact that 21 is not an American citizen you know Demi merely reposted a meme um, about how 21 writes his raps, which was a meme of a scroll and a quill. It's not that serious if you think about it. Yes, she was laughing about the fact that he's not from the States. She wasn't laughing at his situation, but Wale and a number of rappers actually now came to 21's defense by unfortunately bringing up Demi's past, uh, which led to her feeling bullied, and then she left Twitter. And just when you thought the storm was over, Chris Brown then started laughing at him, who also reposted a video that had been doing the rounds on Twitter, where uh, 21's BET cipher was taken, and the lyrics from his song were removed, and uh, it was dubbed with uh, audio from like a big shack rap. And it was hilarious. I laughed at it when I saw it, but Offset didn't think it was funny, and then he decided to come after Chris Brown, and then the two started beefing, started beefing via SMS, started beefing via social media. SMS for Americans is text message, if you don't know. That's what we call it in South Africa. But anyway, back to what I was saying. The two were beefing via SMS, then they took it to social media, took some hectic jabs at each other, uh, with Chris Brown comparing Offset to Puri Tang and the from a pimp to a pimp. Uh, a pimp named Slickback from Boondocks. That shit was funny. What wasn't funny but was a hectic jab is when Offset said to Chris Brown that Chris Brown should come fight him because Chris Brown is only known for going toe to toe with women. Oh, okay. On top of that, Offset went and called Chris Brown a crackhead. This fight got out of hand and it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. But these two, I feel they really need to just square up. Instead of this shit of threatening each other and trying to act hard, they just need to show up in like a parking lot, throw down, and then go their separate ways after they've had the little pissing contest and decided who's more of a man. Our next story is a local story, uh, having to deal with South African fitness personalities back in Bisani who got into a horrific car accident late last year. 
Um, she's actually recently rejoined social media where she's been speaking to her fans and updating them on her healing and her progress as lots of people have been worried about her. But she recently revealed something quite disturbing in that she may have been suffering from a bit of amnesia because she said she remembers nothing of the night of the accident and the fact that the past two years have been a bit of a blur for her. She revealed all this when she took to Instagram to make herself her woman crush Wednesday after a week-long stay in hospital where she feels she's made great progress in her healing. Um, I'm not sure if this is an exact figure or a figure that she just decided to attribute to this, but she said following her accident when she was in hospital, she had suffered almost 80% of her bones in her body were broken and she thanked the Lord for saving her spine, uh, which would explain the fact that her facial structure and her facial appearance has changed a little bit because she may have suffered um, an injury to her skull. But with that said, she says, you know, the last two years have been a bit of a blur, which is something very scary to think about when you've lived a life or lived any kind of life really to not remember some of the things that may have been the best things in your life after such a horrific accident especially if it isn't your fault that you got into an accident it can be quite a thing to deal with but at the end of the day, she made it out alive, and though she suffered some horrific injuries, those of you who are following her on social media will see she still has um, a bandage on her arm from some of the stitches that she got, and she walks around with a boot, because I guess the bones in one of her legs are still healing, and she's often in a wheelchair, because I guess the pressure on her legs can often be too much. Um, considering that even though she's much worse off than she was before the fact that she's alive, as cliche as it sounds, is just something to be grateful for. This past week I went to a pretty cool event where Hard Rock Cafe in Santon relaunched a music series that they'll be having throughout the summer where amazing South African talents will be doing live shows for audiences and entrance to these um, events are free. All you have to do is pay for your food and drink. Um, at the launch event, we were treated to the sounds of the likes of Langa Babuso and Nelly Sivia and I can tell you guys, it was amazing. I will definitely be going back to the Summer Music Series at Hard Rock Cafe in Santon, but I'm just going to leave it up to you guys to check it out for yourself. <laughs> about R. Kelly and all the drama that was happening in the past weeks just because Liam Neeson revealed that he was ready to kill damn near any black man that he came across because a friend of his uh, following a rape ordeal had told him that it was a black man who perpetrated the crime against her. As a victim of crime, I was once robbed at gunpoint. I can tell you guys it's very easy to fall into the trap of being angry and hating anybody. Um, I honestly genuinely just felt some type of way about men after I got robbed at gunpoint and I was often very wary no matter where I was going because I felt like this was going to happen again. Granted I'm very different in this violent person so I wasn't ready to go out here and kill every man that I came across that I perceived as a threat but 
he was just being honest about how he deals with things. You know, as humans, we always want to hear that people dealt with things in this neat, packageable, palatable way. Um, not to say that this is excusing him or to say that what he said wasn't racist. Yes, it was, but the man was being honest. It opened um, a channel for dialogue to be had. And it, it, it made, hopefully it made people who have felt that way before do a lot of introspection. Um, and granted he didn't do anything about it and a lot of people are saying it's just because he didn't come across a person but having anger doesn't mean you're going to act on it a lot of us feel some type of way towards a specific group of people who have wronged us but it doesn't mean we're going to go there and act on it and hopefully these are conversations we as a society can have going forward not just about race but about a lot of things how we deal with trauma how we deal with our feelings and our stereotypes towards groups of people and that's it for this week i hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode and be sure to subscribe to the channel and comment below be sure to share this video with your friends and family so they can know where it's at and come through and subscribe to the channel and don't forget no matter what you are where you are in south africa you can stand a chance to win an amazing makeup hamper that consists of amazing things such as an eyeshadow shadow palette, um, eyelashes, lash glue, anything you guys may need to like put together the ultimate face is in that hamper so don't forget to subscribe and enter before the 28th of February.